Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you um, quite a challenging project. It was a challenge for me. Um, I have something very similar to this, which is what I call my meal planner stroke shopping list book. Um, I have something very similar that I use every week. Um, being quite a busy mom and wife, I like to be organised. I do have OCD. It's it's quite I will happily admit that um, so I like to be organized and I like to be planning um, I like to know what we're having for dinner tonight we're having for dinner for tomorrow um, and I also like to know that when I've been to the shop and done the shopping I haven't forgotten anything because I've got a meal or a recipe that requires something that I forgot to buy so I had one of I bought one of these myself actually um, and I, as I say I use it every week and I love it and it's quite simply um, for you to plan your menus or your meals for a week and obviously this side you can write your shopping list so for example if Monday you were going to have spaghetti bolognese then you could write on your list spaghetti bolognese sauce or passata or chopped tomatoes, mixed herbs, minced beef, minced pork, whichever it is you're using, you can write them down, garlic bread, so that you know then that you've got everything for that meal is on your shopping list. Obviously the, the aim of that is that you take your shopping list with you when you go shopping so that you don't forget anything. Um, Tuesday you might have I don't know, fish and chips, so again fish, potatoes, oil, just anything that you're going to need for that meal. Um, as I say, I I am totally in love with mine. As I say, I use it every week and I would be lost without it now. Um, so, but they are relatively expensive to buy and I get frustrated with it because they are just like a normal notepad, which I don't have to hand, let me grab one. Um, they are like a normal notepad, so they have that tearing off bit at the top um, and unfortunately opening and shutting all the time in and out of my handbag um, and these have torn off in big clumps so now they're just all sat precariously um, and it drives me mad so I thought you know what I could make my own I'm sure I could I have all the equipment all the good stuff um, so I thought right I'm, I'm going to make my own so I simply used one of those notepads that I've just shown you and I just actually tore it in half um, in terms of the thickness of it because I didn't want a full pad um, so I just filled that up and then as you can see I've just got some little um, tabs that go over the top here um, that I've tied on with ribbon don't even go there with the bows but basically what my idea was that when you've emptied this because you can do your list do your shopping list and then you literally can just pull it and it will tear off there so you haven't got to fight with it um, but the idea is that you would un undo all of this I did bodge these pads so I do apologize but it these just come out of the ribbon and then you can just re you know punch your holes back and replace them and then you have a brand new pad in there um, likewise with the meal the meal planning bit I'm not doing bows today they just don't want to work with me um, so for the meal planning one yes this is whisper white cardstock that I've cut down um, and these are three inches and they are uh, literally a width of an A4 so eight and a quarter inches and in centimeters that's seven and a half by 21 um, and then I use the fabulous make a different stamp set to do my days now it did take me a while it does give you neck ache from doing it I tried to line them up um, first off doing the full days um, I just grabbed my block so using my G block I did start off by literally spelling out the days but then when I got to Wednesday and I realized wait a minute it's got two E's and two D's in it and there's only one in the set it became a bit difficult so I, I have to admit and as I got towards the bottom they're a bit wobbly because I got a bit bored I don't have much of an attention span however and I will confess as well that I did not stamp all of these I took two sheets of um, Whisper White A4 and I got three strips out of each one as I said I haven't stamped them all because I just really hadn't got the energy by then but my idea was that you stamp the fronts 
and so that will give you six weeks worth and when you've finished you can just turn them over and you've got six more so you've actually got 12 weeks worth of weeks for meals in there this was done exactly the same and then I've just got half a velcro dot on the sides that just hold it together now you'll be saying hang on a minute why is that DSP so shiny mine's not that shiny no because I've laminated this I laminated the DSP to keep it all nice and clean and because mine is always in the kitchen it's on top of a box that is, has got my bread in um, and it's just going to get grubby so at least if it's laminated you can just wipe it clean um, now I have to confess the laminating idea I did get off and Melvin um, I saw her making some traveler's notebooks that looked amazing and I thought oh why had I not thought of laminating the DSP before now? Um, and so, yes, I, I do apologise, Anne. I can't remember your crafting name, um, but it, it will be on if you search in YouTube. Um, but like I said, I I just thought that's great. And it protects my DSP. Um, and they are just cute. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And it's not that hard. So I'm going with this. Oh, and sorry. Yes, the other thing was with this. I didn't really want to start having ribbon and stuff hanging around so you've got two options you can either put a pen with your things and it'll literally just hook over the top there or then I had the little brainwave of using a pencil with a rubber on the end so actually once you've done one week you could always just erase them out and then you wouldn't have to re-stamp all of this nonsense <laughs> but anyway so yes, so I've gone with this pretty, pretty one this time. They both show what you love DSP and it is eight and a half by nine inches, which is, <laughs> I was misreading some then, uh, which is 21 by 22 and a half centimetres. Then you need to score down the centre. So I'm going to turn it over because I want my score lines on the ins. No, I don't. Want them on the outside ignore me and you're going to score at four inches and four and a half now this one is slightly deeper the spine on this one this one was only quarter of an inch um but i didn't really think about the pen issue so this one's a bit wider um so that's scoring at four and four and a half and it's 10 and 11 centimeters i'm then going to run this through the laminator whilst i do the books so Here's my laminating pouch, which I'm going to pop in. And I have this is just an A4 one that I have just trimmed down, but just make sure it all fits in place when you've not got any bits stuck anywhere because it's going to end up. This is it. So, yeah, so I've just used an A4 pouch and I've just trimmed it off leaving, a, I don't know if you can see, a very, very small um, margin just there. And I've actually got my laminator on over here. I can't bring it over because the lead's not long enough. Um, but I just figured that I'd feed that through whilst I go through the notebooks with you. So, um, yes, I know I did this one in head of time, aren't I good? And no, I haven't done them all. <laughs> so, this is the one I'm using this time. I did these separately, hence them being very wonky. So I have my little, what I call my header, that sits over the top, just like this. And I've already marked some little pencil marks there. Um, I basically measured the centre, measured the centre of, or halfway from the score line down, and then I just sort of roughly measured an equal number. Um, there was no scientific way to it. I literally just went like this, and I'm like that's the center. So I want one about there and one about there, and then I put a ruler across and marked those two. Dead simple. My laminator's finished. I'm just going to take it out and switch it off because I don't need it anymore. Look at that, pretty shiny. Right, we'll come back to that in a minute. So my headers. So these are three and a quarter by two and a half. Um, and scored at one and a quarter 
which is eight by six and a half centimetres and scored at 3.4. Um, or thereabouts, find the middle is <laughs> basically the one you want. Um, I have my handheld circle punch, which just get in those pencil marks in the centre, I'm just going to do. And then, this is all becomes a little bit technical here. Pencil, pad, mark them. Because I have messed this up so many times and it gets so frustrating. So... I simply I'm just gonna put those two circles they don't even look level to me but anyway so I'm gonna take three because I know that I'm not gonna be able to punch through much more card than three and I'm gonna punch whoops oh yes crikey so I've done that one and then I'm gonna do exactly the same again so put these on together, mark again, do exactly the same again, and I have stumped the back one, look I'm very good, and then start and punch ooh, this one, and then once you've got those all done, double check that they all line up, they do, it's a miracle! And then once you're happy with all of that placement, get your pencil in there again and punch your holes. So that's those bits done. Now they look very plain on their own so I do want to add a little bit of stamping. So I'm going with Love What You Do which I've used quite a bit recently. And I'm just using this little cluster of flowers here, just simply stamping on the top. And you do this exact same method for your uh, notepad, your shopping list, as it were. Um, so these was this was stamped in Memento. This is Rich Razzleberry, and this is Grapefruit Grove. Doesn't matter if you go over the crease line because this is going to be a did down anyway. And then we have it all lined up. So all we need now is some ribbon. Now, I have found, I don't know about you guys, but fresh fig seems to go amazingly with rich razzleberry if you don't have any kind of rich razzleberry uh, ribbon. Obviously, we have the beautiful one that goes with the sweet, this lovely velvet ribbon. But I thought it was too thick to go through the holes and plus when you start tying bows you do generally get what I call the ugly side of, of some ribbon. So this one obviously has the plain side. It's not ugly but it's not the proper side if you know what I mean. And then we just need to thread this through which can be a nuisance. Now in the past I have used a needle. You could use a darning needle. Um, I know that as soon as I put the camera on, everything generally doesn't work when I want it to. I actually don't know what I've done. Oh no, it's here. Oops, I had a little bit of a clean stroke tidy of my craft room. I don't even know if this is going to go through actually. Um, and obviously having done that, I moved things around and now I occasionally forget where I've put stuff. I'm told it's my age, but <laughs> I don't know. Right, so make sure that your the ribbon on the back is flat because you don't want that to be um, um, twisted because it won't sit flat on your holder. So that's that through. I'm happy that that's flat and that I've got pretty much equal length either side and then you just tie your bow. I say just tie your bow like it's the easiest thing on the planet. I have had enough of trying to tie these bows today. Honestly when I first tried this made this up hence the bigger holes in that first book I used the half inch circle punch because my idea was to use burlap because I thought that would look really pretty. 
but that didn't work because it was too thick and it wouldn't tie into a bow so then I went for the metal edged ribbon which was beautiful but again it was a little too thick and I'd already stamped all of this and I thought you know what I am not stamping all that again so I just left the big holes hence the fact that it wobbles around this one won't as much so once you have done both of your pads and as I said I did this one in exactly the same way we're simply going to pop some tear and tape on the back now I don't know which whether fuse would work obviously that is now retired um, if you still have some maybe try that um, tear and tape is obviously my newfound favorite um, I do still have fuse but I just figured that this may be a bit stronger so I've put one across the top one across the bottom and I'm going across the ribbon and the reason I'm doing this is because once this is stuck down, you're not going to be able to get it back up. And if you accidentally pull the ribbon out, then you're not going to be able to secure your fresh notepads or your meal planners. So my idea was that if the ribbon got um, fixed in place, then ideally it shouldn't come away and you shouldn't end up with no ribbon so give those a good press and I'm just going to pop those over to one side for a moment because I need to bring the laminated piece back so beautifully laminated nicely sealed nicely keeping clean but obviously we've got these score lines I'm hoping you can just make them out here two score lines that we need to score again so it is a bit of a faucet Phoebe sorry if your name's Phoebe that's just a saying um, force it to bend where it needs to be get your bone folder and give it a real good burnish on both sides get that crease telling it what, what you're doing with it and then you'll get that nice perfect crease and then we need to do the same again with this one so again just force it to where it's meant to go and then get that bone folder in there it's a good workout for them muscles <laughs> and for your hands give it a good crease again on the other side and then once you've done that obviously just give that other one a bend again because it'll have wanted to flatten and so there's your little book and as I said you could really use it for anything now isn't it gorgeous I love this paper and I didn't put anything on the front simply because I just didn't want to. I just thought that, you know, the DSP is beautiful in itself. So we simply now need to add our books in. So taking the backing off this bit. It will never come off when you want it to. Come on. OK, let's start the other end. Yes, you see, this one, oh, this one is going to work. And this one, and this naughty one. Oh, there we go. So that one can come off. And then I just really eyeballed this to get it central. I used the bottom part of the card because it's not going to stick. Um, and then obviously I just want to make sure that I've got enough space top and bottom. I'm quite happy that that is fairly central and just press it down really well and then obviously this side we do exactly the same and if you have somebody who is left-handed then have a little consideration and maybe put the days over this side just so that it's they can see them and it's easier just a thought and obviously you could do this for Christmas as well. So you could do this for a gift for someone who does, um, you know, Christmas shopping and has big families. You could make them a list of all the um, relatives' names maybe or, um, I don't know, anything really. But you could make this into a Christmas one as well. Now, again, with this one, I'm measuring the sides, making sure that the sides are the same distance. But I also want to line this top up. Now... The lines on this DSP aren't straight, but they are a good indication. And I can see that 
this one went just over that line. So as long as my um, pad is straight, I'm going to stick that one down, which isn't straight. Oh, it is. There you go. And then I've just got a lovely pink pen to go with this one that will just clip over the top. And then finally, nearly forgot my Velcro dots. Now these are just some white ones that I've actually cut in half. Um, and again, I've gone for the soft one being here because again, if you're right-handed, you're right here and you're right here and you don't want this scratchy Velcro catching your hand. So I put the scratchy this side and I also measured this and as this is nine inches, I went for four and a half and with the straight edge against the straight edge here I just stuck it in place and then the soft fuzzy side which again I just got these off eBay stick it on to its partner and then just close the book up and give it a squeeze to make sure it's stuck open it up and there you have it, your beautiful meal planning shopping list little book that you could take with you anywhere. And I just love it. And as I say, it would be ideal for maybe holidays as well. You could do it for somebody's holiday, um, anything really. And you can do them in any colours. I just chose these ones because they go with the DSP. Hope you like my project, hope it inspires you guys to have a go. Um, everything that I've used is available, bar the laminating sheets and machine, um, and the pens are available from the online store. So if you want to have a click down below on the um, description, that will give you a link to my blog with all the measurements, and you will also be able to find um, a link to the shop to buy these products. Hope you have a great time guys, and hope to see you all again soon. Bye.